the Baofeng, a relative standard for the size of a handheld ham radio. Until a week ago, my smallest radio, the Yesu VX3R. But now the smallest boy in my ham radio arsenal, the Pico APRS. You know I like small radios, mountain toppers, KX2s, the Yesu VX3. You know that I love APRS and also quirky radios. The Pico APRS is a two meter only amateur handheld radio. It does, right out of the box, APRS, both receiving and transmitting if you put in your call sign. It also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability, which you can leverage to do things such as work as a eye gate on the receive side when connected to Wi-Fi. It will function as a Bluetooth KISS TNC, so everything that the D74 did on APRS via Bluetooth, this will do in this tiny little form factor, and it is literally the smallest radio I have seen to date. And even though it's a tiny little boy with a one watt output, it will actually also function as an APRS digipeter. And, and it does two meter simplex on FM. Yeah, you can talk into it. It's got a PTT and it works. One watt output. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, anyone copy? Oh yeah, thanks, I'm just trying to test a radio here, just uh, wanted to see if I'm making it out of the way. I happen to be standing at the Don Knob Park, uh, just by the tennis courts. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, come back more and more time. What was that again? That's correct. I'm on something called the Pico APRS, a one watt handheld about the size of a, I don't even know, a pack of gum. N6WR, uh, thank you, uh, WOR, the correction there. Thank you for uh, coming back to me to Buena Park. I'm, I'm making it that far at least, I'll take it. Thanks for uh, giving me a contact there. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, 73. <laughs> that is cool. This is the version four of the Pico APRS created by Tanner Schenker. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Tanner, please let me know on Twitter. He's on Twitter. Link in the description if I pronounce your name wrong. It is available at DX Engineering for $399. So it's true. They're not giving this thing away at all. But if you consider the price of a D74 right now is twice the amount of money on the used market. And this is literally three times smaller in the sense of size. And if you're worried that, I don't know, they're gonna stop producing it or there's not gonna be software updates because this is heavily based off of software updates that Tanner creates, it's Wi-Fi updatable for the firmware that's running on the device. I've already downloaded a couple of firmware updates from Tanner and literally you just click the button to update and it just goes off and does it. It is super slick. Complete side note, all manufacturers need to get on board with this concept of the radio just saying, hey, update me, downloading it off of the internet and it just happening. All radio manufacturers, this should be the benchmark standard going forward. I really hope that becomes a thing. Good job, Tanner. Big thank you to DX Engineering for sending this out to me. While this is not a sponsored video, I do appreciate that they did send this to me. Uh, I'm trying to be as objective as possible here, but I am gushing a bit because this is like directly in my wheelhouse, if you all don't uh, understand that. I absolutely love this device. It is really, really fun. Seeing as believing on all of this, let's go to the tabletop and take a look at this really cool radio. I can't understate this point enough. Uh, standard Baofeng. Pico APRS. <laughs> Quick measurements. You've got about two and a half inches on the length, a little over one inch on the width, and the depth is mm, about three quarter of an inch. It is just tiny. 
Uh, I'm gonna zoom way in so we can get to work on this thing to explain what this all does. You just hold the PTT button on the side to get it started. And you're greeted by this fun little welcome message. This is what you see after you uh, load your call sign. You'll have your call sign listed. It is in two meter APRS mode. It's attempting to acquire GPS. Yes, you can set your APRS icon. You can set your standard message for what it's going to squawk every time it makes a beacon. There is a four-way control knob on the outside. It doesn't rotate or spin. It just clicks in up, down, left, right, and a center activation button. And again, PTP on the side. It is SMA female for connection for antennas, which is nice. The battery door is a little friction fit job, and it reveals the battery, which is a Wemo 3.7 volt, 850 milliamp, or 3.2 watt lithium ion battery. And you can see the board is just basically exposed on the outside, basically to hit it to this size. They, they had to make the case pretty thin. I'm not gonna give it a ton of points for a robust case because it, it's, it's really not meant to be a robust radio, but it is good enough for all intents and purposes. And a USB-C charger, yes, beautiful. Let's take you through the battery of arms before we get onto a, a larger antenna here to get some signals. Menu and set, right? So if I click set, we'll go through that first. This is where you set your APRS details, like my symbol, your transmit interval, the call sign, your SSD. In my case, I'm going as seven because I'm portable when I'm using this. Your comment, this is in just stock right now, APRS or Pico APRS by B1, sorry, DB1 NTO. And you hit OK to get out of it. My status text, same kind of thing. Now you can set frequency if you want to, but um, it's set to default for APRS. If you want to do APRS things, I used the set frequency feature when I wanted to transmit on uh, two meter simplex with this. And that takes you through the my settings on the mode of operation. The menu system, really straightforward. Look at the simple design on this really easy to, to use. This is kind of cool. We'll hit this one first because it's the easiest. This will give you the last, last weather station you heard with this being on. Uh, I hear lots of weather stations when I'm in and around town, but when you turn it off and power cycle it, you lose them. So just FYI on that. Any messages show up here under messages, received, sent, new messages. You can set a bulletin message if you want to do bulletins for APRS. The Bluetooth capability, radio settings for whichever mode you want to do. I have not messed around with this. I just leave it on v, uh, VHF one watt APRS and for voice. Under GPS, it'll give you information on the satellites if you are being, if you're picking them up. There is an SOS button. If you hold down the center while this is selected for five seconds, it'll start transmitting an emergency SOS. Last heard are stations that you're picking up on APRS. Exit is to take you out of the menu, obviously. And you can set up Wi-Fi with this. I have mine uh, configured. So basically you can use this whether you're uh, tethered to your phone or at your home APRS, which is pretty nice. Now, going into settings, there's a lot of, there's a decent amount of settings here. Device mode is uh, where you're probably gonna spend your most amount of time. And this is what lets you switch between full APRS mode, which it's in right now. You can do receive eye gate. This is obviously predicated on an internet connection. Just a standard GPS, it'll actually, I believe, sync GPS over Bluetooth. There is a KISS TNC. So this allows you to do things like connect a laptop to it to do APRS over your laptop. And, and yes, this does work. We'll demo that later. FM voice is literally transmitting on two meters with this, which does work. This is FM plus Wi-Fi APRS, which you can do if you're so so desiring and fill in digi is literally a digipeter, a little tiny digipeter that you have uh, on your person at any one time, which is, I don't know of a, a use case for it, but I guess if you're in your car and you've got a better antenna in your car and you can squawk into it with a handheld, yeah, that's, that'll work, that's pretty good. Going back into settings, 
brightness obviously changes the brightness of the screen software update will literally download the software updates that are online that tanner puts out which is super super cool gps power save makes sense the gps will deplete this battery this is not a big battery i mean again it's, it's a tiny little boy so you're going to run out of batteries on this unless you keep it on the USB-C. Uh, settings for beep, takes the beep away when we're clicking here. Units, time offset, device info, um, you get the idea. Tanner in Germany, developed by Tanner in Germany. Pretty cool. All right, that, that's enough of that. I think you get the idea of how this works. It's actually very straightforward, but, but packs in just an obscene amount of features. Let's connect it to a, a good or a better antenna than this, in, in case you all ask me. This tiny antenna is a Diamond SRH815 Sierra. Not necessarily recommended, but it's tiny and it's flexible. You can pack this around really easy and it's definitely better than those little nub antennas. Now, I, I'm probably not gonna be able to get GPS inside the ham shack here, but we're already receiving just a ton of signals with this. If anybody has any um, previous notions about what APRS is like in Southern California. Well, here's, here's all you need to know. We have a ton of APRS. So hypothetically, if we're in APRS mode and we're receiving APRS and I change this to device mode, KISS TNC, and I tell it to use TCP, what this will do is use your Wi-Fi connection. Now I'm on the Wi-Fi. There's a TNC called Pico APRS. And if I run the radio mail application, I should be able to see it when I go to KISS TNC. And there it is, Pico APRS. All right, so let's go to our favorites. We'll select KK6 MSC, which is four miles away. He's on 145.30. So if I exit out of this, go to menu. So I'm gonna set the frequency just to be doubly sure. 145.030 is the setting for the WinLink node. Now I'm going to change it to KISS TNC over TNC or TCP. Now oh, we got it! We're getting it! Oh, I'm so excited! This, this station, the RTE station, oh, is so uh, pretty consistent for me. 16 miles away on one watt. Yeah! Excellent. And what fun would having a little tiny TNC like the Pico here be if I didn't uh, go ahead and connect it to my phone to do APRS? I have connected this to my laptop and it works just fine over Bluetooth. But if you want to use your phone, you basically need to set up a tether and connect to Bluetooth or connect to the wireless to the device here. And then they'll network together, which I've done. And now you can see I'm getting in all these fun little packets. Let's throw that on the map here. All right. So these are all the packets I've picked up all the way, geez, up to K6IXA. I'm assuming that is a relay message. But yeah, these are all the stations that the Pico is picking up right now and modeling, displaying on my map. So if I wanted to, I could send any of them a message if I was so inclined. I haven't had a good opportunity to wrap up a video like this in a while with the would I buy it recommendation. Yes, this is exactly the type of device I want. The fact that it is one watt is probably the only thing that would keep someone from looking at this. However, if you put a good antenna on this, like the one that you may have at your home, on your roof, in your car, if you had a dedicated car antenna that was just for doing APRS things, this will work just fine for you. And again, as close to a resonant antenna as possible is gonna be your best bet when it comes to stuff like this, right? So not a short little stubby antenna, there's lots of pictures on the web with a little nubbin antenna, and that looks great on pictures, but you probably want to put a little bit bigger antenna on this. So I'll let you guys sound off in the comments. Obviously, I'm a big fan of this, but I also totally understand that I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff, and my interests lie in the weird and the quirky, and this fits that 
definitely, but the fact that it is fully functional with so many APRS things and still can work as a two meter radio in that size is just like, uh, chef's kiss Tanner, you did a fantastic job. Love to hear your comments, and if you have not already, please consider subscribing. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching, and 73.